Hello and welcome to part 3 of this tutorial on how to create a full stack website using MongoDB, Express, React, and Node. In this part, we'll be working on our backend routes, so let's get started. In the backend, create a models folder and create a user.js file for our user model. Require Mongoose and Bcrypt. Now to create the user schema. So create a user schema constant and set that equal to a new mongoose.schema. For a parameter, we'll pass in an object where we define the information our user will have. So we'll need a name. Set the name to an object where we set the type to string and required to true. So when we create a user in the database, they're required to have a name and it will be a string. We'll need an email and a password also, so I'll copy this down twice. Rename the second one to email and I'll add one more element. We're going to set unique to true, so there can't be two users linked to the same email. Rename the third object to password and we don't need to change that. Now copy password down and rename it to isAdmin. This will be a boolean, so true or false. We'll set the default to false. We want to use the same model for our admin users, so we need this property and it will be false by default, that way regular users don't need to worry about it. I'll add one more object at the bottom with some more information. So we'll set timestamps to true, and that way when a user is created, we store the current date. Underneath all that, we're going to add a method or function to user schema that will match an entered password with the one saved in the database. So set user schema dot methods dot match password equal to an async function where we'll take the entered password as a parameter. Now inside the function body, return a wait bcrypt.compare with our entered password as the first param and this dot password as the second. We're using bcrypt to encrypt passwords sent to the database so it doesn't show the actual password. We'll also need bcrypt to check if they match. We're done with checking if they match, so next we need to encrypt the password. So call user schema dot pre with save as the first parameter and an asynchronous function as the second. The function will take next as a param. Inside the function body, do an if check for this dot is modified and make sure to have the exclamation point up front. Is modified will take in password. Inside the if check, call next. Right below the if check, we'll start the salt encryption. Create a salt constant and set it to await bcrypt.gensalt. We'll pass in 10 as the parameter. The number you pass in is the round of encryptions it will do. So higher numbers will take a little longer, but there'll be a stronger encryption. 10 is the recommended number to go with. Next, we'll set this.password to await bcrypt.hash with this.password as the first param and salt as the second. Now to create our module.exports. So set it equal to user and set user equal to mongoose.model. We want the first parameter to be the same as our user and the second will be our user schema. We're almost done, but before I go on, I realized 
I spelled required wrong on all of these, so let's fix that. They're all spelled the same, so I'll select the top one, then hold control, and click D three times to select the three similar errors. We're done with our user model, so our user is set up to be stored in the database. Next, we need a function for creating our JSON web token so we can validate user sessions. In our backend, I'll create a utils folder and in that create a generate token.js file. Require JSON web token as JWT. Now create a generate token constant that will set to a narrow function. We'll pass in ID as the parameter, which will be our user ID. In the function body, return jwt.sign and pass in ID as the first param and process.env.jwt underscore secret as the second. We haven't made that variable yet, but we will soon. The third parameter will be an object where we decide how long until it expires. So I'll set expires in to 30 days. And I'm doing that since this is a tutorial. If you want to set it to something lower, go ahead. Now set our module.exports to our generate token function. Inside our .env file, I'll create the jwt underscore secret variable and just set it to some random characters. Okay, so now we have our user model and we have our token function. So now to work on our backend user routes. In the backend, create a controllers folder and create a user controller.js file. Here we'll need the express async handler package, so I'll require that and name it async handler. We'll also need our generate token function and our user model. Now to define the routes, so I'm going to create some comments with a little information about each route and I would suggest you do something similar. Our first route will be a post route at slash API slash user. The description is it will register a user and create a token. and the access is public, so we will have private routes later that only admins can access. Now to create our register user route. So create the constant, and we'll be wrapping our route in the async handler, so inside the parentheses, we create our async arrow function. Pass in request, and response as the two parameters and create the arrow. Inside the function body, first we'll pull name, email, password, and isAdmin out of the request.body. We need to see if a user exists before creating one, so create a user exists constant and set it to await user.find1 then we'll pass in an object with email. 
I'm going to switch my formatter settings to remove semicolons when not needed. So if you're using Visual Studio and the prettier formatter, which I am, you can go to your preferences and search for prettier. Then near the bottom, you'll be able to untick the box for inserting semicolons. Back to our register user controller. Next, run an if check to see if user exists. If it does, send a res.status of 400, then throw a new error saying user already exists. If not, we'll continue. So create a user constant and set it to await user.create. with an object with all of our user data, so the name, email, password, and for isAdmin, we'll do a check to see if we got anything. So if isAdmin, then isAdmin. Now check to see if we successfully created a user. If so, send a res.status of 201 and some JSON with an object containing our user information. So for a successful user, we'll set underscore ID to our user dot underscore ID, set name to our user dot name, set email to user dot email, Set isAdmin to user.isAdmin and set token to our generate token function with user.id as the parameter. Else, so if there is still no user returned, we send a res.status of 400 and throw a new error displaying invalid user data. We're done with the register user controller, so now to create the actual route. Inside our routes folder, create a user routes.js file. Require express Create a router constant and set that to express.router now bring in our controllers. So we just have register user, so require that. Actually, I realized I didn't export the register user function, so head over to our user controller file, then make sure you export register user. and required that from our user controller file. Now to define the route. So call router.route and registering a user will be the default route, so just slash. It's a post request, so at the end do dot post and the parameter will be our register user controller. Now export our router. Inside our server, we need to require our user routes. And then down in our routes section, we'll call app.use with the main route as the first parameter. So slash API slash user and the user routes as our second parameter. We're done with this route, so now we need to test it. We'll be using Postman to test our API. So if you don't have it, you can just Google download Postman and then the first link should bring you to where you can download the app. Once you're done downloading, it should ask you to create a free account. 
I already have one, so I'll open up Postman and get started. It should start you up in a blank project, which I have right here, and I want to create a new collection to test my user routes. I'll name it user, and then add my first request, which will be a post request to slash API slash user. And for the description, it will register a user. Now switch the request type to a post request and enter our backend URL. So we're at http forward slash localhost colon 5000 slash API slash user. Now for the body, we'll switch to raw data and change it from text to JSON. Now to input our user data. So my name is Elijah. I'll use a fake email, so Elijah at example.com. For a password, I'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, something easy to remember. And I'll set is admin to true since I'll need an admin account later on. I'll send the request and actually get nothing back, but that's because I didn't start up my backend server. Back in Visual Studio, I'll open up a terminal and run our dev script. Now both the front and back end are running, and I'll send our request to the back end. And here's the JSON we send back with a successful registration. So we have our token, our underscore ID, and all our other information. And that's the end of this part. Thanks for watching.